Here I am in my garage. A couple Lambos are missing at the moment, but got my saw, a couple tools moved over from the other shop that I was using before to build out the box truck. We're gonna build a chicken coop today. What I've got behind me are two sets of four by fours, pressure treated so they can get all wet and stuff like that. One of them, one side is seven feet tall and the other side is eight feet tall. The idea being we're gonna build a single, I forgot what the terminology is for it. I don't know anything about building, but it's just one slanted roof. So you don't have to play with, uh, you know, like caps and stuff like that to fill creases on the top. Uh, we're gonna cover it in metal. We're gonna build in a 30 gallon tank of water with rain collection. Hopefully some kind of automatic egg collection system as well. Point being, we need like an automated egg producing system for the chickens that I can also move around when I want to in like the summer. We can move it. I got three acres, which is quite a bit. And I want to be able to move the chickens to certain spots so they can eat the grass, the bugs, and all that kind of stuff. Enough talking. Let's uh, go build a rolling, mobile, automatic, egg collecting, watering, self-watering chicken coop. And off-grid. Don't forget off-grid. Hey, future barbarian here. Good job, me, in the past. That's right. We're going to be adding solar power and battery system to this chicken coop. It's like a chicken prepper's dream come true. They're going to have everything they need. And ultimately, the objective here was to create something that needed as little amount of maintenance as possible. So self-watering, anytime it rains, we've got 30 gallons of storage here. I'm going to try to build in an egg collection system that makes it so that I don't have to clean out the nesting boxes every day. Solar power is going to help us keep this thing cool in the summer and secure with webcams and secure from bugs with Bug Zapper. And of course, it's mobile on wheels. So that if I want to, I can move it around to greener pastures, so to speak. What you're watching here is the construction equivalent of guerrilla warfare. There's no design for this. There's no schematics and literally just Think about what I need to do. I think about what this chicken coop needs to be able to accomplish. And then I start to visualize it in my head and work from there. There are a couple snags along the way, which I have to work around. The most important one being uh, the fact that this was a 10 foot long chicken coop. It would have been a lot easier if I just made it eight feet long. That way I can use a single piece of plywood, but this chicken coop will fit about 20 chickens, making it 10 feet long will allow me to expand my flock significantly if I need to. I can actually hold probably about double that amount of chickens, no problem. So we're, we're talking about 40 chickens sleeping and using this chicken coop comfortably at some point, potentially in the future. Some other important considerations here. First of all, I'm in Houston. So again, temperature is important. Uh, that's why we're putting in windows at the top of the coop so that hot air can rise out. We also have a Jurassic Park amount of bugs out here. So we need to use some very thick screens on those windows to make sure that no mosquitoes are gonna get in. I had my chickens in a smaller chicken coop before this. It was not sealed very well and they were getting terrorized by mosquitoes all night long and that's just unacceptable i need my eggs to be created in a stress-free environment i had some leftover panels from my shop build and we're gonna be using those on the, the roof of the chicken coop here. So they're actually gonna match with my shop, which is pretty cool and gives me good protection against the elements. One thing I will note, if you're thinking about doing this on your own is that you definitely don't want to have that metal as your standalone roof material because that metal will turn your chicken coop into a chicken fryer in the summer when that heat, that sun is beaming down directly onto it. So I've got a layer of plywood on the roof there to not only secure the panels, but also act as insulation from the heat radiating off those panels. 
These screens are going to be key in the summer for allowing airflow through here for the chickens to be comfortable at night when it's going to be anywhere between 80 and 100 degrees down here in Houston. I've also got some window panels that I can replace when it gets cold. So if I feel like it's going to be too cold, I can always put these window units over the screen. That way it kind of contains that hot air and allows the chickens to be nice and comfortable. Now chickens are much more cold tolerant than they are heat tolerant. And in Houston, it's pretty much never going to get cold enough to use those, but I figured it's nice to have on hand as a general general principle. Now the idea I had for the nesting boxes included a sloped floor so that the eggs would roll out into a central collection area. This is important because if the eggs sit in the nesting box they can get dirty and that just makes more work for me. They can get cracked so we can also, also waste eggs and we don't want that either. So. I figured I'd try a design that allowed the eggs to roll into a central location and I'm only going with two nesting boxes here because I had four nesting boxes on my previous coop and the chickens only used two, barely. They pretty much only used one, the other one was basically a backup. So that's 20 chickens, 16 hens using two nesting boxes which they seem to be perfectly fine with. Occasionally, there's a random egg laying around here and there that I have to pick up, but 95 to 98% of all the eggs go in the nesting boxes. You might be wondering why the chicken coop is so tall, and that's because I uh, factored in some super long-term potential threats against the chickens, including flooding. So every five to 10 years or so around Houston, we get some catastrophic flooding the last time was Harvey and uh, the water will get to three four five feet deep in the area that I live the whole northeast corner of Houston is essentially a gigantic floodplain so we're just taking into account that fact and making the chicken coop tall so that if the chickens need to they can retreat into the coop while there's water surrounding and uh, spoiler alert we get to test out that feature quite soon it's also going to act as a shaded area and a just a general shelter when it's raining or uh, it's in the middle of the afternoon the sun is beaming down the chickens have somewhere to go to be safe from the elements and i don't have to create another structure if i move the coop around it has a permanent outdoor shelter with it just due to the fact that it's got a large roof and it's got plenty of space underneath for the chickens to hang out. So it's pretty much self-contained in that respect as well. Nothing fancy for the water collection here. We've got a gutter on the front of our sloped roof, which will feed all the water straight into our 30 gallon water tank. And that'll gravity feed through a valve into five self-watering chicken cups that are all basically gravity operate as well so there's no intervention needed from me to give them water unless we go without rain for so long that that tank ends up drying out during the summer months it does get hot enough that we don't get rain for a month straight for that to dry out i did have to fill it up with manually a couple times since this but for the most part it stays pretty full because we only need one good rain every couple weeks to keep that 30 gallon tank full. I made sure the entire inside of the coop was painted. It's not necessary. It's not for aesthetics. It's for longevity. So any kind of moisture or chicken manure that gets on the walls and the floor is going to have a harder time penetrating into the actual wood creating rot and uh, the paint is just acting as another layer of protection there. The coop is surprisingly easy to move on flat, hard ground, but once you get into very soft, muddy clay, 
it's a whole different story. And I was stubborn enough to want to move this regardless of those conditions. So it was a very difficult process to clear the path to my chicken coop and use a series of levers and pulleys and all kinds of contraptions to shove my chicken coop through the mud. This coop was making indentations into the clay about three, four inches deep with those wheels on there. But eventually I was able to get it into placement. Only a few short months later, I was able to test out the flood protection features of the chicken coop. And you can see that uh, the chickens were totally fine. Despite the fact that they were surrounded by water, they all made their way into the coop during the floods of May Hello. 2024 here in Houston. Hello. Now, this is two months after the floods here in pretty much real time in July. I was offered a sponsorship from Temgot. They sent me one of their 200 amp hour 12 volt batteries to test out and make a video for. I figured what better use than turning my chicken coop off grid. The coop does have a surprisingly large amount of electrical components to it, including the box fan to keep the chickens cool, security cameras to keep everything locked down. I actually use those security cameras to identify and eliminate some raccoons that were stealing some food. We've got a bug zapper to keep the mosquitoes out and some lights at night to detect motion and uh, just help me keep the whole thing illuminated. So we've got a lot of stuff we need to power. An 800 watt inverter is gonna be more than enough to power all that stuff. I've got some leftover steel angle that I'm gonna be using for making my own custom solar panel mounting brackets. This steel had been sitting around for some time, so I had to make sure and get all that mill scale and rust off there first. We've got all our electrical components in a nice little neat box here. This is pretty much everything we'll need, including the inverter, the solar charge controller, solar disconnect, and a breaker in front of our inverter. All we need to do is connect the panels and hook up the battery. I've got two 400 watt panels here. Definitely a little bit overkill, but my chickens live in luxury. So we're gonna get these two panels mounted to the roof, get those connected up and get our battery on our utility shelf on the lower level of the chicken coop. So that shelf was purpose built to hold not only the water tank, but also batteries, inverters, what? feed, whatever else I want to put in there for the chickens. She's like, not in my backyard. We're getting our solar panels connected here. I'm using the uh, ferrules to make sure the connections on the ends of these are secure when they go into the solar disconnect. And we're covering these in some wire wrapping as well to protect from the sun. With our solar panels connected in series, they're both about 33, 34 volts each. You can see that we've got about 66 volts, which is what we need to see. Get that battery hooked up, switch everything on, make sure everything is functional. We've got 13.4 volts on the inverter. Solar charge controllers can doing its thing. This is actually the first time I've ever used the Temgot app and it's quite honestly the easiest app I've ever used for any battery or battery management system. It detects the battery right away. So it's very responsive. It's got all the information there that you'd need to see, which is perfect for my situation because I can't see the actual screen on the battery. But if you don't want to use the Bluetooth app, keep in mind that that battery actually has a really nice touch screen directly on it so you can change configurations turn on and off charging and discharging now this particular model from temgot also has self-heating so if it gets too cold in the winter this thing will actually activate a self-heating function to keep it above the minimum temperature necessary to functionally discharge 160 
The bug zapper only takes 30 watts. That's awesome. So that's really good. That'll run all night, no problem. Down below, they've got three little benches they can sit on and a big box fan right in front of it. So they can sit there and they'll get a breeze during the summer. And the box fan, which only has to run during the day, draws about 60 watts. And I don't have any lights to use yet, but I do have a couple webcams. I got a webcam for inside and we've got a webcam on the outside so I can watch for predators and stuff. So I'm gonna get those plugged in. If you guys want some roosters that make really funny sounds all the time, I would recommend getting uh, Speckled Sussex. Those guys are just endlessly making me laugh. And with everything hooked up, we've got nothing left to do but put our coop back together and give this some time to test it out. Make sure everything works right. In conclusion, everything after several months of usage has worked great except for one feature on the chicken coop and that is the central sloping egg collector. Too many shavings get into the nesting boxes that impede the rolling ability of the eggs. So generally, I just have to pull the eggs right out of the nesting boxes with these hatches that I added on there. Otherwise, water collection, solar power, everything works great. The Temgot battery has tons of capacity. It only discharges about 10% every night. And even with minimal solar power through clouds, I'm able to recharge that 10% throughout the day. So we've got more than enough power to run our entire off-grid luxury tiny chicken house. Links are in the description below if you guys want to pick up your own battery with my discount code. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.